Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Boko Haram is an Islamist militant group based in northeastern Nigeria. The group's official name is Jamatu Ali Sunna Lida Awati Wal Jihad, which in Arabic means people committed to the propagation of the Prophet's teachings and jihad. However, it is more commonly referred to as Boko Haram, a nickname given by locals which roughly translates to Western education is forbidden in the local Hausa language. Boko Haram was founded in the early 2000s by a Nigerian cleric named Muhammad Yusuf. The group's primary goal has been to establish an Islamic state under strict Sharia law in Nigeria, and it strictly opposes Western style education, secularism, and what it perceives as corrupt Nigerian authorities. Over the years, Boko Haram has engaged in a range of activities, including bombings, assassinations, abductions, and attacks on military and civilian targets. They have been responsible for numerous high profile attacks and have caused significant instability in northeastern Nigeria, as well as neighboring countries like Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. The group's most notorious action was the abduction of 276 Christian schoolgirls from the town of Shibok in northeastern Nigeria in April of 2014. This incident garnered international attention and led to the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. As of June of 2023, 90 of the girls are still missing. Many of the 276 were eventually found or escaped their captors, though some were killed. Boko Haram has undergone several leadership changes and its ideology has evolved over time. In 2015, an internal split within the group resulted in the emergence of a faction known as the Islamic State in West Africa Province, or ISWAP, which pledged allegiance to the Islamic State, better known as ISIS. ISWAP has since become a significant threat in the region, while the original Boko Haram group, led by Abubakar Shikau until his death in 2021, continued its activities independently. Efforts by the Nigerian government and regional military forces, such as the Multinational Joint Task Force, have been ongoing to combat Boko Haram and ISWAP, but the groups continue to pose a security threat in the region. Boko Haram and its offshoots have caused significant human suffering, displacement, and instability in the Lake Chad Basin region of Africa. Much like ISIS, Boko Haram are no strangers to graphic propaganda footage and have released several gruesome videos over the years. However, unlike ISIS, the videos from Boko Haram are not slickly edited or filmed with good quality cameras. The videos released by Boko Haram are more akin to videos released by drug cartels, very gritty and grainy, and of course, extremely brutal. Boko Haram have garnered the reputation of being arguably the most brutal terror group in Africa, and even the world, so much so that even official Nigerian military have been filmed fighting fire with fire and matching them in their own brutality, as well as vigilante groups taking matters into their own hands, protecting their communities from Boko Haram. There are various graphic videos online covering both Boko Haram atrocities, as well as them being on the receiving end of such treatment. But nevertheless, let's take a depraved journey into the dark and merciless world of the brutal Boko Haram. Number 1. Cutthroat Bloodfall The first clip covered in today's video is arguably the most well-known surrounding Boko Haram. 
However, they will not be perpetrators of this brutal incident. Instead, it's widely believed that the Nigerian army were the culprits, and the victims were members of Boko Haram. The video leaked online in August of 2014, and it drew widespread condemnation from various humanitarian groups worldwide, including Amnesty International. In fact, it was Amnesty International who obtained the video and exposed it to the world. According to Amnesty, they stated that sources, including members of the Nigerian military, confirmed that the perpetrators were indeed military personnel. The condemnation of the alleged war crime put pressure on the Nigerian military to investigate the incident, which they claim that they did. However, nothing seems to have come from the investigation. Amnesty International would go on to claim that the Nigerian military had been committing similar acts from as early as 2009 when Boko Haram waged war in the region. They cite various witness testimonies of extrajudicial executions, torture sessions including the pulling of teeth, burning, electrocution, and even SA. In a 2015 report by Amnesty, it found that the military, sometimes in collaboration with civilian task force members, had executed at least 1,200 men and boys. At times, hundreds were killed in a single day. Sometimes, the bodies were dumped on the outskirts of villages near their homes. Others were never returned. It was also claimed that more than 7,000 men and boys had died in detention, according to the reports. Starvation and thirst were common causes, but disease also spread in overcrowded cells among sick and tortured prisoners who were left without medical aid. The military were also alleged to have sprayed fumigation chemicals into the unventilated cells. The deaths of said prisoners were rarely recorded or investigated. Although Boko Haram are without doubt a ruthless and bloodthirsty group of terror, the indiscriminate approach taken by the Nigerian army, as well as civilian task forces to combat them, would without a doubt have claimed the lives of innocent individuals living in the affected areas. As mentioned, the video of the mass execution was released in August of 2014, but is widely believed to have taken place in March of that year, shortly after Boko Haram's attack on a detention centre in the Giwa Barracks in the northeastern city of Maiduguri. In relation to the leaked video, Nigerian Defence Spokesman Major General Chris Olokolade said, the military authorities view these grave allegations very seriously. Much as the scenes depicted in this video are alien to our operations and doctrines, it has to be investigated to ensure that such practices have not crept surreptitiously into the system. He added that such behaviour would be counter to the training Nigerian troops are given. That level of barbarism and impunity has no place in the Nigerian military. Respect for the sanctity of life is always boldly emphasised in our doctrinal training, he said. Despite the video being acknowledged by the Nigerian military, no further comment was made in regards to the outcome of the apparent investigation, which more than likely never transpired in the first place. In relation to the video itself, it reminds me somewhat of the infamous Dagestan massacre video. The cold, calculated, ruthless and efficient approach of the executioners is strikingly similar. If I could describe the video in a couple of words, it would be systematic brutality. It is possible that a longer version of the video exists, as reading articles about the case, it shows images that are not in the copy of the video that I obtained. Some images appear to show the captives digging a large hole, which would act as their final resting place. Upon searching and asking around, 
I could find no links to a possible longer version. The video itself is 2 minutes and 14 seconds, and immediately as you play the video, you are met with sheer brutality. You see four armed men, two of which are wearing army type fatigues, while the other two are wearing civilian clothing. The men are armed with bladed weapons, mainly knives of varying sizes. You see three other men holding down a suspected Boko Haram member, who is laying on the ground next to a deep grave, big enough for multiple people. The fourth man slits the victim's throat as the others hold him down. The victim is right on the edge of a crudely dug grave, and you see blood run down into the grave, creating the effect of a waterfall. The victim has his throat sliced open as the soldiers can be heard chanting. One states, let's go, let's go, let's go, in a frantic manner. The man who's had his throat slit is then kicked into the grave, causing a thud as he hits the bottom. You hear the sounds of heavy strained breathing, but it sounds like it's coming from more than one victim. It's a bad descriptor, but if you've seen a Halloween movie, it sounds like the breathing sound Michael Myers makes through his mask. It's very disconcerting. The camera then pans down into the grave, and it shows two people laying in it, bleeding out. The other man had his throat slashed off camera. Both men are still alive, as they fight to cling onto life. Another man is then called for his execution. It's worth noting that there are a bunch of men in the background sitting down captive, waiting for their turn to be snuffed out from this plane of existence. The next man is wearing an all-white robe, and he doesn't fight at all. He accepts his fate as he lays down next to the grave. Once again, three men hold the victim down, with one placing his boot on the victim's head, which causes distress and a slight groan of pain and panic. Another man then enters shot, and the executioner of the previous victim hands the knife over to the new killer. One of the soldiers shouts, Gentlemen, we'll be going one after the other, as he looks back at the other captives. It appears as if he wants to get a move on. Bear in mind, there appears to be at least 10 men in the background. The new killer then starts to slash the victim's throat. He only does it for a few seconds before he hands responsibility back to the original killer, who then completes the job. Blood once again leaks down into the grave like a waterfall. After the victim's throat is slashed, once again, he is then pushed down into the grave, which now contains three people. The camera then pans down again, and it appears that the two other men in the grave are now dead. Another man is then called to meet his demise, this time a shirtless man wearing jeans. At this point, the side of the grave is completely stained in blood. He lays down next to his eventual resting place, once again with no fight. You still hear the sounds of laboured breathing from the previous victim. After a few seconds of deliberation and talking amongst themselves, the executioner slits the victim's throat with a knife before the video eventually ends. The video, as I mentioned earlier, can only be described as systematic brutality, and it perfectly highlights the brutality and reality of war. It's worth noting, other sources state that the perpetrators may have also included members of a civilian task force. Regardless, the video is very brutal, and the efficient manner of the executions is more akin to that of a slaughterhouse, more so than man killing man. Number 2 one by one. The next video was once again released in and around December of 2014, this time the horrific crime being perpetrated by Boko Haram. The video is a longer one at 4 minutes and 54 seconds in length, and the footage appears to have been obtained by a company 
called 15 Past 8 Media Group. It is possible that the video stems from the Damasak Massacre, which occurred on the 24th of November 2014, when Boko Haram invaded and captured the city of Damasak in Nigeria. Essentially, in retaliation for civilians joining self-defense groups. The inhabitants of the city fled the advancing Boko Haram jihadists. About 3,000 civilians left the city and fled to neighboring Niger. They crossed the Yobe River, bordering the two countries on a boat, though many civilians died attempting to swim across the river. Boko Haram started hunting people down fleeing the city and killing them, and by the end of the attack, an estimated 50 people had been killed, though the real number may have been closer to 100 victims. As you play the video, you are met with the sight of multiple victims who have had their hands tied behind their back, being unloaded from what appears to be a truck trailer. Each man is pulled out of the trailer and then thrown onto the ground. The first 50 seconds or so of the video shows the men being unloaded, and there has to be around 15 men. They were unloaded onto a bridge, crossing a river which would become the execution site. The video then jump cuts, and it shows a Boko Haram member holding one of the victims by the feet as he dangles off the side of a bridge. There is already pools of blood on the bridge from previous executions. As the victim is being held, another Boko Haram member, who appears to be carrying an AK-47, then shoots the victim, before the other man then lets go and lets the victim fall off the bridge into the river below. This process is repeated over and over and over again, victim after victim. At around 2 minutes or so into the video, the person filming then takes a second to look over the bridge, and he pans to the river. You don't see the victim's bodies, but you see that the river now is stained with streaks of blood. By the end of the clip, I'd estimate that around 15 men were executed. In one instance, one of the victim's skulls was completely blown apart, and you see brain matter leak from his cranium before he is thrown in the river. The nature of a video is extremely disturbing. Much like the previous video, the systematic nature of the clip is hard to get my head around. Unfortunately, I can find next to no official context surrounding the video. Number 3. Hand Chop the title of the video is relatively straightforward, but nonetheless brutal. The video, from what I gather, seemed to have made its way online in December of 2014, and much like the previous video, the footage appears to have been obtained by the company called 15 Past 8 Media Group. In fact, all three clips have stemmed from 2014, which was one of Boko Haram's most brutal years, if not the most brutal. The video itself is 1 minute and 49 seconds, and having looked at it, it actually appears to be some kind of mob justice incident perpetrated by Boko Haram. As you play the video, you are met with shaky cam type footage, and you hear a ruckus in the background, with people chanting and shouting. Arabic music has also been dubbed over the video. Initially, it's hard to make out what is going on, but you see Boko Haram members holding a man's hand down against the ground, and then another takes a knife and starts cutting the man's hand at the wrist. It also appears that a tourniquet has been applied to the man's arm to stem the bleeding, which further points that this is a punishment video more so than executions. As the blade slices through skin and flesh, you see the whites of the victim's wrist bones, and after a few seconds, the victim's hand is completely removed to the cheers of Boko Haram members. The hand is discarded and left on the ground. 
The man who sliced the victim's hand off then uses a cloth and dips it into a metal pot with a clear liquid. He then applies the cloth to the victim's stump. I'm assuming it is some kind of antiseptic to prevent infection. The video then jump cuts, showing a man being held hostage by armed Boko Haram fighters. One of the terrorists reads out a brief statement before the video jump cuts once again. The victim receives the same treatment as the first. This time, multiple men pull his arm so that it is outstretched, and once again, he is cut at the wrist with a knife. The process doesn't take long at all. A matter of seconds. The man's hand is then cut off, and there seems to be more blood than the first victim. You see it drip and stain the dirt ground. The men cheer as the dismembered hand is then raised up in the air. Once again, a man dips cloth into the clear liquid, and he applies it to the victim's stump. However, this causes the victim to scream as he tries to pull his arm back as it is being applied. It's hard to find any backstory, but possibly this is punishment for theft. It certainly seems that way. The instigators seemed keen on keeping the victims alive and treating their wounds after the brutality had been carried out. Without doubt, Boko Haram are one of the most brutal terrorist groups in existence today. Many of you have requested this video, though, quite frankly, it wasn't an easy one to do due to the lack of backstory behind various clips. There are other videos I could have covered, but finding the information behind them is certainly difficult. Unfortunately, Boko Haram to this day are still causing unbelievable issues in Nigeria, victimizing innocent individuals and families to further their bloody agenda. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. If you could hit the like and subscribe, it would be much appreciated. If any of you have any topic recommendations, please feel free to follow me on Twitter and drop me a DM. That is always the best place to get me or to reach me. And also, if you could check us out on Twitch, once again, the link will be in the pinned comments. Over on Twitch, it's a much more chill environment. We don't really talk about things like this. We just have fun and, um, you know, have a laugh and whatnot. So if you're interested, check us out on Twitch as well. But anyway, as always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.